Hello everyone and welcome to our presentation. I'm Siavash Tusi and I'm here to talk about the effect of wing tip vortices on boundary layer and wake of a NACA 0012 wing from some of the high fidelity simulations that we've performed. Wing tip vortices are these very distinct vertical structures that are formed at the tip of the finite span lift generating surfaces such as wings. And they are formed mainly as a result of the pressure difference between the two sides of the wing, meaning the suction side and the pressure side, and between each side and the free street. The most important or most significant effect of these vortices is the induced downwash or the downward velocity that they impose on the wing, which changes the effective free stream direction and lowers the effective angle of attack. But even more importantly, and thinking about this in terms of the inviscid theory where the lift vector or the force vector can always be perpendicular to the uh, free stream direction or the local free stream direction, it means that the now rotated lift vector has a non-zero component in the x direction, uh, which effectively means a new component of drag. And that's what's known as the induced drag, the lift induced drag or the vortex drag. <clears throat> So looking at uh, section-wise lift and drag generation, we see a significant drop in lift generation for a wing tip case or finite span wing case compared to an infinite span one uh, at the same angle of attack uh, while a simultaneous increase in the pressure drag, which means that there's a significant drop in aerodynamic efficiency of the wing. In addition to the mostly inviscid effects that we discussed so far, there's also a very strong interaction between the vortex and the boundary layer and the wing. So this includes some uh, non-equilibrium and three-dimensionality effects uh, as if because of the imposed pressure gradient and rotation uh, of the wing tip vortex, a, a local relaminarization of the boundary layer on the suction site near the vortex formation region, as well as a strong interaction between the wake and the uh, wing tip vortex in the form of the uh, shear layer roll up or wake roll up around the wing tip vortex, as well as a shift in the wake center line because of the induced uh, velocity by the wing tip vortex. And these are all reasons why we should study these uh, kind of vort wing tip vortex phenomena in more details using high fidelity simulations. For high fidelity simulations of this study, we are considering a NACA 0012 profile, which is a symmetric profile that generates no lift at zero angle of attack. We are considering straight wings, meaning uh, rectangular platforms with uniform cross section and same angle of attack, no twist. And we're considering two separate geometries, periodic as well as rounded wingtip. Uh, we consider three angles of attack, zero, five, and 10 degrees, and a court, at a court base Reynolds number of uh, 200,000 and an aspect ratio of 1.5. The code we are using for our simulations is NEC 5000, which is a spectral element code. Uh, we're using polynomial orders of seven, and we're using a version of the code that is capable of adaptive mesh refinement, AMR, or grid adaptation, which means that it can uh, increase resolution locally or put more elements where higher resolution is needed, such as near the vortex core uh, in the turbulent wake or near the wall in turbulent boundary layer while leaving the rest of the domain where nothing important is happening relatively coarse. The table summarizes the number of grid points and the resolution for each grid. Uh, the number of grid points is variable between 370 million to 2.2 billion, depending on the geometry. And the resolutions are in the same range, uh, meaning in the streamwise direction, 10 to 12 in plus units, in the wall normal direction, 0 0.6 or 0 0.2, 0 0.8, and in the spanwise direction, uh, between six to nine. Before I show you any results, I just want to mention that we've recently made and published a video on YouTube uh, visualizing the five degree uh, wing tip case, which you might like. You can scan this QR code and then it takes you directly to the YouTube video. Going to the results section, we can start by looking at the vortex formation process. So here I'm plotting the streamwise vorticity for the three wing tip cases at zero, five, and 10 degree angles of attack. The dark blue region here means a uh, counterclockwise rotation, while the uh, red region means clockwise rotation. So for instance, in the 10 degree case, this uh, kind of dark blue region 
shows the primary vortex core or the vortex core for the primary vented vortex while this dark uh, red region uh, shows a secondary vortex counter rotating to the primary one which is formed as a result of the main vortex formation and then there's this uh, third and fourth vortices that are also formed in the 10 degree case at this location the 5 degree case shows uh, large negative values of the streamwise uh, vorticity but no discernible vortex core yet if we go further downstream now the vortex core for the 5 degree case is also formed with its own secondary vortices uh, and then for the 10 degree case now the vortex has separated from the surface with some vertical separation at the 10 uh, at, at the trailing edge now the uh, vortex core for the uh, five degree case has also separated from the surface with some vertical separation which is lower than 10 degree which is because the 10 degree case was stronger formed earlier separated earlier and now has a larger separation uh, another interesting observation is that despite the difference in their vertical separation, their spanwise location between 5 and 10 degree are very similar, if not identical. And then uh, lastly, <coughs> for, the five, for the zero degree case, there's no vortex, uh, wing tip vortex, since there's no lift. But then there's two uh, counter-rotating vortices formed at the trailing edge. It's also interesting to look at turbulent kinetic energy level as well as its production and the transport terms in its equation. And by transport here, I mean the sum of all of the uh, terms in the divergence form, including mean flow convection, uh, pressure, and turbulent transport, as well as uh, viscous diffusion. So this is the five degree case. Uh, and then this location, there is no uh, discernible vortex core yet. So what we see is that there is almost zero TKE level uh, where the vortex is to be formed uh, and then there is a relaminarization of the turbulent bonded layer but there is non-zero turbulent kinetic energy which seems to be mostly a, a result of core production rather than transport. Uh, when we go further downstream uh, now there is uh, some TKE level at or uh, at and around the vortex core uh, but more importantly, there is very significant production activity going on, especially around the core, and some uh, transport activity, which tends to uh, subtract uh, the kinetic energy from where it's produced and then transport it elsewhere, but at this location, not towards the vortex core. As we go towards the trailing edge, there is now a very large uh, transport activity towards where the vortex core is. Uh, and then there's still very large uh, TKE production around the core and it's very, very large TKE levels uh, around the core, but still not so much uh, at the vortex core itself. This large TKE transport towards the vortex core increases the TKE level further downstream. Uh, as you, and as you can see now, there's significant TKE level at the vortex core itself. Uh, the overall picture is still the, the relatively the same now there's still uh, significant TKE transport towards the vortex core uh, but what's changed is that there's no not anymore a very large TKE production activity going on at or even around the uh, vortex core compared to say the VIG uh, and then there's also uh, interesting to uh, observe that there's a significant dissipation activity going on at the vortex core as well Finally, looking at boundary layer thickness at different spanwise locations, one very close to the root and one uh, like uh, in 70% from the root between the root and the wing tip region, we see that the two are very similar, meaning that most of the non-local effects are limited to this area very close to the wing tip region. The second observation we make is that in all cases, in all the rounded wing tip finite span cases, uh, the, uh, the boundary layer thickness is always lower and closer to a boundary layer at a infinite span wing at lower angle of attack. And that happens because of the uh, lower effective angle of attack that we discussed in one of the first few slides. And the other thing we discussed was the relaminarization of the boundary layer, which can be observed in these uh, figures closer to the wingtip area. 
for both the 5 degree and 10 degree angles of attack. And this concludes my presentation. Thank you very much for listening. Unfortunately, I couldn't attend the meeting in person, but you can ask your questions from Ricardo, who is the session chair, or you can email us at the email address is listed at the bottom of the slide. You see the QR code for the YouTube video, and then we're about to submit the paper uh, very soon. So please stay tuned. Thank you very much.